The Airbus A350 is not just a wide body, it's an extra wide body and it's come storming into the market to great popularity from the people flying on it for sure. But what about up front? We're with the uh, experimental test pilot, Frank Chapman, who flew for the A380 first, he's now with the A350. Frank, what's it like coming from the A380 to the A350? Well, I think the biggest change when you come into the 350 cockpit are these large screens. Uh, when we finished the 380 program, we went to the airlines that were operating the aircraft and said, well, what do you like about it? What do you think we should improve? Uh, where do you think we should go with a new cockpit? And um, uh, they came back with their feedback. We had our ideas and we put all that together uh, and started looking around at the technology that was available at the time. Um, and of course, we're, we're always looking ahead. So we wanted uh, the large screens. We wanted more interactivity, better connectivity with ground operations, um, a more an easier cockpit to, to use from the pilot's perspective. Um, and so we, we designed this layout and, um, and it's really come on over the years as we've come through the 900 experience into the 1000 experience. It's basically very similar. The, uh, the pilots can move between the 1000 and the 900, no problem at all. It remains um, with the standard uh, philosophy that we've had through the years from 320, 330, 340 up to 350. So we have the common type rating between 330 and 350. And although it looks significantly different from a 330 cockpit, once you understand the uh, interactivity, it's very, very similar in fact. And the pilots adapt extremely quickly moving from one aircraft to the other. Now you say it eases the, the pilot workload, if you like, with the screens. How does, how does that actually happen? You know, you, you take your briefings and work together. Is there anything different on the 350? Yeah, I think probably one of, the, one, one, of the, one of the really nice things that we have on the 350 is the fact that we can move the, um, the charts uh, for briefing departures and arrivals into the middle so that we can brief together, as we did in the old days with our paper charts. We used to say, well, this is the, this is the departure, uh, this is what we're going to do. Does it, does it agree with the FMS? Well now, uh, it, we moved on to the electronic flight bags and when we first had the electronic flight bag, it was very much a case of the pilots having their individual iPads or, or computers and they'd work in their corner a little bit separately so it moved the crew apart and we wanted to bring the crew back together again and we did this by having this um, functionality where we could bring the electronic flight bags which are normally set up with the maps and charts and the, uh, and the paperwork on the outside screens, we could bring that into the middle so that we can now discuss our departure and arrival together as a, as a team rather than two individuals looking outboard at their, uh, at their iPads. And it, it even looks different as well. It looks like you've got a different shape here on the, on the flight deck. Yeah, the reason we did that, we, ha we had to fit the screens into this space. And although it's a, it's a wide body, you know, we still needed more space, but we, so we canted the screens back on the outboard uh, for these outboard two. Um, and actually, we had uh, that gives us the advantage that I can see the first officer's screen, and he can see my screen. And if I want to bring his screen over to my side to check it, I can do that. Um, and uh, it, it, it makes life very, very easy to, uh, to to operate. So I can see what he's doing. He can see what I'm doing. Uh, and it's really, really probably the. The, the best, uh, most user-friendly cockpit out there at the moment. Just looking down here, there's something that's, that's come from the A380, I think, isn't it? Can you just talk to us about the rollerball here? Yeah, the trackball and, uh, and cursor arrangement. We can move a, a cursor from screen to screen on the A350. Um, when we had the, the, the feedback from the A380 operators in the early days, everybody liked the fact that the trackball was, was something where you could could fix your hand, it, it wouldn't move, it would stabilize the hand in turbulence. You could move the cursor from screen to screen. Um, and we had reasonable interactivity and, and great feedback from the operators. So we said, well, when we go to 350, we'll keep that in place, but we'll extend the interactivity across the screens. So we've actually improved our interactivity. We've now included touch screens on the outboard screens and the center screen so that you can slew in, in calm conditions, you can slew maps and charts or you can use the, uh, the cursor. So we've got, the, we've got two possibilities with the A350. Now I see here you've got the uh, head-up display um, to look through. Is that a standard for the A350? Company policy is to have a head-up display as optional. Uh, and the main reasons for that are the head-up display, it's heavy, it's expensive, it costs in training, and not all airlines necessarily want, it really depends on their operations, 
what types of operations, what types of airfields they're flying into. If they're flying into airfields where they're flying long final approaches from 10 miles with precision guidance all the way to touchdown, really it, it's of less value than if they're flying uh, like the corporates for example into small airfields with no approach aids where they need a little bit more guidance. Um, there's a lot of discussion in the industry. Uh, we've, gone, we've taken the, uh, the line that we'll, we'll leave it as optional. It's up to the airlines to decide whether they, they want to include it or not. But it's available on our aircraft. So you've flown a number of different aircraft. The A350 looks great to me. Is it your favourite? Pilots love flying. Um, all aeroplanes are slightly different. In terms of the handling, I think the, the modern flight control systems in the A380 and the A350 make it uh, a really nice handling aeroplane, there's no doubt. Um, we can do things with this aeroplane in terms of tuning the flight controls, which we weren't able to do quite so easily in the past because it has a very powerful flight control system. Um, and for flying the display, of course, that makes all the difference. Now, there's obviously there's a lot of automation, but what about flying by hand? Do you still do that? For the, air, for the flying display, everything is hand-flown. So we disconnect the auto-thrust. Um, so it's manual thrust, manual flight for the whole, uh, whole display. But of course, on the line, the autopilot is used for the most, most part. Um, and what's the reaction you're getting from customers who have now been, you know, the pilots that have been flying it, what do they think? The feedback's very good. Uh, we're, we're delighted with the feedback. Well, we knew... Once we saw the cockpit and we started to operate it ourselves, we realized we had a real gem uh, and we're getting some fat, really positive feedback back from uh, the clients now.